Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that are happening today. We have the premiere of Flagship Friday, so you're going to get to see some of the uh, my after-school programs in which uh, kids make the movies, and I edit uh, some of them as well, and you guys get a chance to see some of them, but you'll be a chance to see all of them until the end of the... the uh, uh, flagship season this uh, fall um, and you'll be able to see it on our channel th the whole glorious uh, short films that a lot of these kids have made through their creativity um, I also have some pre-critic I got a little bit of that uh, city council report to talk about today as well but we're gonna kick things off with a little bit of weather currently it is cold out there folks 21 degrees outside with a high of 51 your low is gonna be 26 today so it's gonna be pretty nippy out there uh, it's gonna start warming up a little little bit for the weekend but then once with the Sunday night hits it's gonna start a raining so things might be seen a little cold weathers we might even see some snow in higher elevations but of course um, Columbus Day or in, in Missoula it's Indigenous Peoples Day well, we're gonna have highs into 54 degrees and Monday night we're gonna have lows into 32 degrees so um, that's kind of what's happening there. One of the things that are happening here in and around Missoula is that uh, Max Bacchus, former senator of the state of Montana and ambassador to China, spoke at a uh, dealio last night, um, basically spoken on the U.S.-Chinese uh, economic Cold War, as he calls it, as the two powers are playing a very long staring contest with tariffs um, on exports from both sides. Abakis was speaking on campus Thursday for a con uh, conversation with U.S. trade with China, along with Michael Punk, the former U.S. ambassador for the World Trade Organization and author of the best-selling novel, The Revenant. Bacchus believes that the U.S. Ha should have a multilateral approach when it, when with other nations rather than going at it alone. Um, of course, it has been tough on U.S. farmers who have seen some of the biggest exports to China, which have now turned to obscure countries that cannot keep up with the demand of the population that diminishes our own U.S. Uh, population. Um, he says that uh, more Chinese students, tourists, business people visit the U.S. compared to other way around. Um, Bacchus uh, w uh, was nominated by former Democratic President Barack Obama, but Bacchus says, uh, said previous administrations didn't have enough of the strategic plan for dealing with China and as ambassador he wanted to increase ties with them and there was a lot of uh, economic growth in the last uh, five years uh, courtesy of former um, Governor Brian Schweitzer as well trying to increase trade with China um, that's why he made that stint on the Late Show with David Letterman. So a lot of things kind of happening. A lot of things are kind of trying to connect. But right now everything's kind of at a standstill with uh, the economic Cold War, as it's being, as it's not really a Cold War. Mostly it's all about ec economics because China wants to be a very large economic power and it has a lot of support along with there as well because their government is basically in charge of their economy. So it's very different of how they approach it, but they have the full support of their government moving forward on their economic growth as well. So that's kind of what's happening in that uh, local news set in Missoula and connecting to the world. But also, another thing that's happening in uh, the United States as well is that impeachment kind of, what wh they're trying to feel it out, trying to understand exactly what's going on with impeachment with it. But another thing has happened that has gotten um, Trump in hot water yet again. Uh, Syria has uh, come under a purview of the Trump administration. The growing divide between the President Trump and many of his fellow Republicans over the decision to move U.S. troops out of Syria in way of Turkish incursion threatens to uh, delicate, uh, to, uh, uh, threatens to uh, uh, change his alliance with the congressional GOP at a time when he needs their support more than ever, according to party analysts. Uh, there's been a steadfast party to uh, the controversy of his presidency has become a little more fluid on this. Um, Illinois' Representative John uh, uh, Shimkus, who is retired from Congress, called the president's decision to leave Syria Kurds uh, to fend for themselves terrible and despicable. Of course, there hasn't uh, been the only time Republicans have voiced opposition since John McCain voted against the repeal of Obamacare. Trump's uh, decision on Syria should not be a complete shock since he called for a complete withdrawal in Syria in December before reversing himself at a similar backlash from Congress and military leaders. So that's kind of what's happening in national news. Uh, in, in, like, There's a lot of international um, connections happening in the news today as well, especially in Uganda, which plans to, ho uh, to uh, basically start a kill the, gay, uh, kill the gays um, bill that they wanted to pass, which originally started out as a, um, which currently in Uganda, if you're gay, you're in jail for life. 
Now they want to just kill you. So the bill uh, known as Kill the Gays uh, bill in Uganda was nullified five years ago on a technicality that the government said on Thursday it plans to resurrect it within weeks. Uh, the original uh, bill never passed because uh, of of since 2014, the world's uh, governments, uh, the U United States reduced aids, imposed visa restrictions, canceled military exercises. The World Bank, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and the Netherlands also suspended or redirected aids as after they tried to do this back in 2014. Uh, currently, a gay, say sex is punishable with life imprisonment, and many LGBT folks have fled their country as refugees. So. That's uh, kind of what's happening in the world today. And here's something that's happening more locally. Some new programs are going to be airing on MCAT. So without further ado, here is some of the city band. And here is part of the Norman McLean Festival. So without further ado, here's this. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about some movies that are coming out. And as they both sought out their own paths and their own respective professions, Peter and Ehlers are connected also by the curious process of making books. Although Ehlers probably never ran a printing press, and Peter is not a writer, he has said that he became a printer because, although his own adventurous life was quite like a novel, he did not possess talent enough for writing one. It so happens that grandfather and grandson staked out claims at either end of the protracted business of making a literary contribution. And here I must digress briefly to make the case, I am an English professor, to make the case that 40 years of Forrester is, in addition to its value to forest science and to the genre of management memoir, and even to the academic discipline of history, it is a book of literary merit and value. It's a hell of a read, filled with passages of prose of enviable caliber that convey insights that are quite ahead of their time. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. Kicking things off, we got The Gemini Man, which is a Will Smith movie. Uh, he's back, folks, and it's not a dinosaur story because we got a little bit of that cloning, a little bit of sass, a little bit of uh, what you're talking about. All that so, uh, such a wonderful things happening here as well. Uh, they're using, uh, basically, they're bringing back old stars, using some de-aging technology to make them look younger, because why not? Uh, so... Our favorite stars from the past will see a reflection of themselves in the future from the most movies where only person more badass than you is a younger you? 90s Will Smith versus current Will Smith in a movie about assassins and clones. Um, they could call it clo Clone Sashin, uh, and it aired off the rack video on demand fi film anyways. So anyways, this probably has just two guys meet and be like, wait a minute, you look like me. They get kind of thrown off or whatever, and then their government's like, you've got to kill this person. It's like, there could only be one of you. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, oh, okay, I guess so. If you ever want to be whole again, you have to kill your other half. I'm like, oh, okay. So well, they fight each other, and then maybe they team up for a second, and then they go back to killing each other. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, we got we to gotta clean this up. We can't have either of them alive. They're too dangerous. Blah, blah, blah. And then things happen and I'm assuming like big explosions and blah 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 yeah you're, you're basically getting what you're paying for up next we got the Adams family uh, from the nightmare escape of family values comes a rebooted hotel transfer Transylvania esque film and before you even say it, it's just like wait Adam Stanley came before hotel Transylvania but Adam's family it's basically about satirical families where it's just like everything's kind of weird dark and macabre 
uh, gothic, very much like that, but also very happy about it too. So uh, from the works of like Tim Burton-esque world where we must adapt to our community and the new uh, nuclear family, which, you know, doesn't exist because this movie is more just kind of like about like, remember like real traditional families and we're not that traditional either, but of course, you know, the Adams family is kind of traditional in the sense of what traditional was back in the day when they actually made the show, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to get into it. I don't want to think about it too much, but you're going to get what uh, something that was relevant 50 years ago in a modern day update facelift. So here you go. I, I believe that there's going to be some kind of deal where they just like have some growing pains with the community and community's like, you know what? This family not might not be like us, but they're our community and we're in it together and blah, blah, blah and stuff like that. So at the very end of the movie, there's a couple of gags where the people are like jumping on monsters bellies and just like, oh, cool. Oh, we're surfing on the dragon's tail. Moving on. <laughs> the next up is a critically acclaimed film. Uh, if you saw this trailer, I have no idea what's going on in the trailer as well, but it's basically about a family who forges documents to uh, get better jobs. And as this becomes clear, they be basically become tutor babysitters of this rich, prestigious family, and then slowly and surely start to kind of become part of the family and then replace the family. And I don't know, I saw some, like, it, it was kind of like... It, it's called like a comedy, but at the same time, it was really creepy when they were laughing. I don't know. This is basically about a movie. It's a thriller. You can't expect anything to kind of be different. It's more just kind of like, okay, so what's going to happen? This is basically the rundown of this movie. Family fakes their way into there. Almost get found out. Things bad, ha bad things happen. Maybe this family is not as uh, uh, posh as they might have thought. They might be savage people. Um, and then things kind of happen. Things kind of change over, and then they have to learn to be just as savage as these people. Uh, they learn a lesson, and <sighs> I don't know. I, I'm assuming uh, since it's the director of Snowpiercer, things are kind of kind of get pretty crazy, and probably everybody dies at the end of the movie. All right, movie, <laughs> and that pretty much does it for all those movies coming out as well. I promised you a uh, flagship Friday, and this is the kickoff for the flagship Friday uh, year of 2019 to 2020. So it took a while. And now we have a little taste of a movie called Nailed It. What are you doing? I hate being inside on rainy days. There's the bell. Oh, yeah. Watch it. Jazz. Oh, yeah. She, she was so annoying. They said they were going to make it. Yeah. So stupid. Short and sweet to the point, let's move on to some city council. One of the things that are happening within the city of Missoula is some city council. Long story short, there was a four hour and 42 minute meeting. I'm gonna try to get through this as fast as possible. But the the thing that they're doing right now is they're basically rezoning a lot. A lot of people are concerned that they're gonna be moving the trailer parks out of this particular area. And Gwen Jones, 
talks about a little bit more about affordable housing and about how we're growing as a city and how some of that has to change as well. This is a section of people that are difficult to house and for a lot of reasons the market does not address their needs. So this is a scenario when I think the nonprofits and the governmental entities need to try and all collaborate and thank you for the smart people who put this all together to make it work. So I think it definitely addresses a community need and I'm happy to speak in support of it. All right, so part of this rezoning is kind of a, a restructuring of the area as well. Um, and part of this is um, kind of here. I'll kind of show you what, the, uh, what they're kind of going to be talking about as well. So if you, if you do take a look at this, they're basically rezoning it and kind of flipping array around how their zoning is in this area to making sure that uh, the people who are in the trailer parks stay in the trailer parks while the lot can be used for that commercial housing development that they want to do. So... What this is what, um, let me just double check my notes. And this person who's talking is Jenny Baker, uh, talking about this. The subdivision exemption request is for a boundary line relocation. And that's what has created the need for this rezoning. You can see on the left, the boundaries of the lots as they exist currently. This is prior to the boundary line relocation. So the commercial building is on one lot and then the lot boundary actually goes through the middle of where the existing mobile homes are. There is a single dwelling at 2526 Mount Avenue that's to the west and then the large parcel in the middle has sort of the other half of the mobile homes and one other single dwelling. On the right. So, uh there's a kind of a brief explanation is that they're basically kind of flipping the zoning just to make it but also one of the biggest concerns is they're doing is they're adding a little bit of of that um, commercial entity in there as well so the lot will make uh, up to 31 unit homes but have to build uh, the infrastructure that could take all of to 2020 to achieve and here is a, a community member uh, Jen uh, Trinkle and this is what she had to say about the uh, development we have concerns about the neighborhood. Um, our considerations are that the review criteria may not be as accurate as it could be. Um, and that we're, we're saying if you want to roll the zoning to the west, um, uh, the commercial zoning, which is coming off of the Reserve Street Corridor, that amounts to commercial creep. And um, we just you know, it mount is a two block street um, as, as far as the, the commercial coming in there. Um, we suggest that maybe it can be rolled back and that will also take care of not displacing the 17 trailer unit um, individuals who are there, most of whom are on a fixed income. Could All right, so uh, that was Jen uh, Trickle. Um, and that's, that's one of the biggest things that are happening in here as well. Um, Trailer courts have becoming more and more res uh, more and more uh, instances of residents being pushed out of one way or another, and a lot of these rented lots are owned privately by landowners, and they lease them to uh, these trailers. So a lot of times, when the landowners gets enticed to buying, especially in a market where development is really growing, it really has a chance of really pushing people out, and a lot of times renters don't have that kind of. Uh, safety net that most homeowners do and so there's really not much that can uh, the city of missoula can do to help with that so aaron p and office of uh, housing and community development reflects on the future of mobile homes in missoula and it's uh it's not that optimistic honestly aware through our research of anything at the statewide level that would require uh, anything beyond just the normal standard notice that a tenant receives when they're being evicted from their unit, which can be anywhere from three days to 30 days in some instances. So three years is very generous. We oftentimes see landlords give six months when a property is going to be redeveloped. Um, we currently within our city process don't have a clear juncture through which we could intervene and work alongside a developer on either um, preserving mobile homes if and whenever possible and if not uh, working alongside developers to support relocation assistance or to support those tenants in finding uh, equitable comparable housing in the community that is so yeah there's there's really not much more i can kind of like talk about this in terms of this but uh 
the popular term is economic eviction. That was one of the things that was thrown around during the city council meeting as well. So the future development of the site is moving forward with the rezoning to reflect the commercial residential lots in the off Mount Avenue areas. Um, of course, I'll kind of leave it that topic out there because there's a lot of other things happening um, in this meeting as well, which has to do with uh, the uh, 54, 57.4 acres of land up Mullen Road. Background, you know, you know the Mary Jane Boulevard, they want to have developers build a throughway so there's a, a less of a traffic problem on, off Flynn Lane. They want to uh, alleviate some of the traffic that's coming in and out of, in and off of Reserve Street off Mullen and all that stuff just to get to Broadway, just another uh, throughway as well. Uh, what they did, developers cut density in half so they don't have to, uh, they, just, they reassured the people that there's not going to be any kind of high rises there as well. Um, so Rosemary uh, Thurston, she uh, is representing 41 residents of the condominiums in the area, is concerned about this particular development having that high rise for uh, apartments. They are going to maximize what they build without regard to how it affects us and our community. Um, we believe these will be the 40 foot apartment buildings. We've not seen a comprehensive plan to deal with the impacts on traffic, noise, schools, or view sheds. The zoning is being represented as black and white that must be decided upon today. We do not believe this to be the case. The parcel in question is very large and has lots of possibilities. We understand Missoula needs to grow and are not unreasonable people. We believe there is a lot of room for compromise to allow Missoula to grow and still limit the impacts to the neighbors and the community. We suggest a council member makes a motion to extend this deadline. We will give all of the affected parties time to meet and come up with the solution. This could allow higher density and still mitigate many of the other problems that we and others have. And of course, during many of these meetings as well, is that they were talking a lot about um, mitigating, talking to the community, and getting in uh, in contact with uh, a lot of the people in these neighborhoods. Nick Kaufman talks about the developers' plans, uh, exactly what they are, exactly what some people are concerned about, exactly what they plan to do. We're providing a park for the multifamily along the front of Mullen Road, which uses Hellgate Meadows and Pleasant View. We're providing a connection to 4100. We're providing mostly two-story homes adjacent to 4100. And when the build grant is builds Mary Jane, or we build it as developers, right, all the traffic will go to Mary Jane through our neighborhood. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So that was basically a reflection of something that they've been talking about for the last couple months, trying to, the developers, the city of Missoula is just like, uh, okay, we're going to have all this stuff. We, we want to build. This is a perfect opportunity to build a lot of high-density type stuff. And the developer was speaking to the community members, and they'd be like, okay, um, maybe this isn't such a good idea as well to uh, build um, such like high-density housing. And it was like, okay, then I will, then probably we, we, we can build something that's more reflective of your guys' neighborhood, but also eliminate more of the commercial element that the city really wants to in, in, input in this as well. And so what they did is they had a compromise and a lot of the commercial elements that are already in the neighborhood or already there are, have been established or some in Nick Kaufman's um, chagrin basically said that they're still kind of under undeveloped um, and they still have to improve some of the uh, through traffic for fire lanes and stuff like that because there's a couple narrow streets there as well that they have to r redevelop for uh, ability to get through and drive through as well because if you've been able to drive through those uh, um, avenues as well Chelsea Drive and whatnot up uh, th the area it's pretty uh, pretty intense for sure just to get through all right let's move on um, this item has been sent back to community and will be back for their final reading on the October 21st and I'll talk to you guys more about that later as well but what the what's the one thing that we love here in Missoula it's Ted's Ted's is tax um, um, tax um, townhouse exemption development and which really gives an incentive on a lot of builders but a lot of times the incentive means that they have to go through a lot of red tape through the city of Missoula it is streamlined when it's done right but it's also very difficult when it's not done right as well so Ryan Fry, uh, oh sorry, Ryan Fry, builder in town, talks about TEDs are being used to build sidewalks and other projects and not necessarily their intention. 
So I've built these homes, paid for and installed new sidewalks, curbs, gutters, moved and updated two storm drains, paved the surrounding alley. So the city has no new roads or new infrastructure to maintain. Yet, a total yearly tax per unit, or, um, sorry. Yet, we have four new units with a total of 3,200 a unit put down. So that, that means a new tax base of $13,000 in the city with no new infrastructure costs to the city. So basically what he's kind of reflecting on is that um, re regardless, uh, so here's a little bit of respect. One of the things that the city of Missoula did in the past is make special improvement districts, which would build sidewalks, improve sidewalks and stuff like that. But a lot of people complain that it would that it would tax people too much and the taxes were already high enough. Um, so what they decided to do in, in difference, because SID would be a certain designated area which they wanted to improve on. It's just like, we need sidewalks, but we can't afford it, okay? So how are we gonna do this? So what they decided to do is try to roll this up with some of the developers as well and being like, hey, you're, uh, you're part of this townhouse exemption development as well, but part of this also means that you have to put money down. You can also apply for grants to help build some of these uh, sidewalks and infrastructure improvements as well as we're moving forward with this because some of the infrastructure is now also on within the city because of the water company, which is owned by the city, which would have to uh, basically set up the hookup but then, of course, the water main usually goes on the homeowner, and then, of course, the city sewer hookup with uh, all that stuff. So there's a lot of th stuff, so little little details that have to be put in there. But a lot of the costs usually end up going to the homeowner. But with this whole uh, affordable housing deal that's going on here, a lot of the developers are paying it with uh, with a longer extension of certain taxes that get tacked on to this a little bit later on. So a lot of times the housing goes down, but the taxes go up on the property with maybe uh, not necessarily go higher, but go longer. That's, oh, that's one of the ways that the taxes have been used to um, be paid off is just extended. All right, so moving on to the next uh, quote that we have here, uh, Gary Bryan, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, talks a little bit about TED projects as well. I would, my complaint about the TED, the, what's going on here is, I look at some of the TEDs that were done during the 10 year time frame of the recession. I know that the old Claussen Manufacturing now has affordable houses that were built within a year and sold out within the next year in the north side and now with the limitations of how many it's kind of just an arbitrary number if it's, is it really the best thing to put a number on it or is what's the best thing for the property in the city so i just think that the ted is a affordable get houses on the street and creates a simpler process than the subdivision which needs its own overhaul Thank you. All right, so um, it's more than just the TEDs a lot of times. It's the process in which uh, TEDs are created. Uh, Dwight Easton, Missoula Organization of Realtors, had this to say about TEDs. There's a lot of concern about this ordinance and what it will do to home ownership opportunities in the moderately priced price points. I think we need to seriously consider that. Um, we, it is our hope that we can quickly move forward to streamlining and improving the process to develop moderately priced homes in Missoula. Thank you. Thank All you, right. sir. So, um, oh wait, hold on a second. Uh, let me just get my bearings back in order. Of course, a lot of concerns for TEDs and even more for an update during this meeting as well. Ben uh, Brewer, the main guy talking about the updated process. Uh, so it's on the Title 19, but it's also going to be part of the Title 20, which is part of that new 20-year plan about affordable housing, increased housing, and just about how the city of Missoula grows as a whole. So this is what he had to say in terms of higher density um, and how uh, the TEDs relate to that. The language in here is, was based um, originally upon the, you know, the, the threshold set by that size cap. And so um, rather than um, agreeing to or, or moving to raise the cap um, out of hand. Um, what came out of that committee meeting was that the uh, cap would stay where it was because that had kind of set the, the um, scale of how the, the other standards in this were developed, but that the, bonu the, the bonus to the cap was, was included. And so um, there is the ability to um, develop to the, to the um, level that was recommended by planning board but it involves kind of a, a layer of transparency and 
coordination through the review process. All right, so basically what he's saying is that uh, one of the big things that they wanted to change about this new townhouse exemption development is they wanted to increase the minimum from 10 to 15 and the maximum from 20 to 30. So those are kind of like the townhouse units uh, of place that they wanted to increase it on. But one of the suggestions was, is like, we don't want to do that. But all at the same time, if there is the ability to do a certain amount of things and run the rules and going through this process uh, as smoothly and transparently as possible, they can get up to 30 units per, per acre. Or is that per acre? No, yes, per acre, yep. All right, so... Um, yeah, I mean, this has been, a, it was a long meeting. Uh, ben Brewer, uh, he talked a lot about these TEDs during this meeting as well. There's a lot of going back and forth with the city council, lot, asking a lot of uh, questions about how this is going up. But primarily, this is an update of TEDs that reflect the Title 20 rezoning conjunction with the city, blah, 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 all that stuff. One thing you got to definitely know from this as well is that this is something that had to be done to uh, help clarify these TED projects, especially with a lot of uh, projects that are coming into play. And it, like it's, uh, they want to create high density housing and high density deals, but people who take advantage of the TEDs within the city, but also do high density type um, TEDs as well, are having difficulties just determining where it'd be like, okay, slow down, Turbo, that kind of deal, but in more uh, legal s jargon. Uh, so here is Mayor John Ingen, and he reflects on this proposal, who is not completely happy with it, but it it's necessary. Context. We started with an ocean because we didn't like a particular project very well on a hillside in Missoula, Montana, that generated notions around we got to stop townhome developments because we didn't anticipate this going on. And that produced, uh, I think, a degree of panic and concern that resulted in a call for a moratorium on TEDs. We moved on from moratorium on TEDs to an emergency ordinance on TEDs. I question the, the premise that we had an emergency to deal with, so we ended up with an interim ordinance. That's what we've been living with now for the last six months. And we imposed on ourselves a deadline to craft a permanent ordinance, and that's what you're considering this evening. Um, there's little that I heard from the folks who build houses in our community tonight that I didn't agree with. Um, I don't think we like our subdivision regulations very well. I don't like. I don't think the community likes our subdivision regulations very well. Um, whether you're a developer or whether you're somebody impacted by development, I don't think you like those regulations very well. I don't think we like our TED regulations very well. Um, ben did yeoman's work in describing the depth and breadth of this document. Um, if I were building stuff in Missoula, Montana, I sure as hell wouldn't want to deal with these regulations. Um, they're cumbersome, they're challenging, and I think they also fundamentally go to that affordability issue for the end user. All right, uh, so um, more or less that this, uh, they had a couple of amendments that failed, but one of the biggest things is that the motion was approved based on moving forward with an ordinance that needed a major update for growth and putting a leash on TEDs in terms of growth and size for the future. Um, this is something that needed to be updated because they had an interim ordinance means that uh, they already had something in place that if they didn't do anything at a certain point, then it was going to be quite a crisis because the whole TED deal, what's going on right now, is uh, is at a, a at a crisis point in terms of affordable housing and development as well. Uh, they we need more houses to be built, but this process was put into place so there isn't that carried away kind of deal when it comes to the process as well. So there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of going on there, but they ended up just moving this forward as well. But this is, since this is an updated ordinance, doesn't mean it can't be updated again. And this is going to be constantly going back and forth within the community as well. So thus ends your city council report. Up next, we got a uh, nice little uh, video package for you guys. I, I, I edited this down. This is one of our programs that airs on MCAT. It's from Forestry Days, the 23rd Annual Forestry Days, and it's going to be from uh, Historic Museum at Fort Missoula, their logging area. So this is where University of Montana students and other uh, loggers at heart compete in logging competitions, and you get a chance to see a little bit, a little taste of all this right here and right now, but you'll, you have to go to MCAT.org to be able to watch the whole entire video.
that food. They got oh, plenty of hot food over at the old uh, uh, spot in the northwest I, I corner of our yeah, arena. Yeah. Yeah, perfectly. So if you want to watch the people, a lot of people waving their uh, chainsaws around, 
Log on to MCAT.org for more information and full programs. All right, let's talk a little bit, crack, 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 uh, <laughs> uh, about what's happening within the city of Missoula. Kicking things off with your Friday is all the indoor fun stuff with Roots Acre Sports Center, Missoula Gymnastics, Flying Squirrel, and Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. Pretty much happening around 9.30, 10 a.m., and it goes all day as well. Um, but also there is an, uh, Tiny Tales and Story Time at the Dragon Rug and Large Meeting Room at the Missoula Public Library starting at 10.30 a.m., once your kids are done doing some tumbles and some twirls, maybe they want to sit back and relax and enjoy a good book. Yarns and Watercolor from noon to one at Missoula Public Library as well. It's a good chance for uh, kids to get involved with that as well. But they also have a youth book festival and adult writers workshop happening at the Public Library starting at 3.30 this afternoon. Picture book author slash illustrator Ethan Long, local Missoula author and teacher Aaron Sal Salden, and Lake uh, Salt Lake City uh, author Robinson Wells will visit area schools during the day to help celebrate the Youth Book Festival. Later in the day, Aaron Sa Salden and Robin will enjoy the regular Friday Young Art um, Adult Writers Group to share their background, writing strategies, inspiration and to participate in writing exercises and critiques of participants share with the work workshop held in the large meeting room from 3 30 to 5 30 p.m this afternoon bigger the life mel mccull mccudden uh, the art spirit gallery with over 70 works uh, in his upcoming show the art spirit gallery well love uh, uh figurative oil painter mel mccudden is unstoppable the popularity of his prolific Millwood Washington artist comes from the immediate recognizable loose style and unconventional subjects for his annual McCutton ex exhibition. The Art Spirit Gallery will f fill the walls, floors to ceiling, to wall to wall. McCutton's figure figurative expressionist work that engages and entertains all audiences. And you can check that out at the Art Spirit Gallery. Uh, Mr. Burns, a post-electric play, is going to be at the University of Montana, kicking off tonight as well. It's a dark. It's happening this weekend, next week as well. This is a darkly com comic imaging of a post-apocalyptic near future. A contemporary play in the New York Times called Downright Brilliant spans over 80 years and at least as many pop culture references. Um, a group of strangers become a traveling theater troupe performing remembered episodes of The Simpsons as a way to make ends meet in the barter economic that rises from the ashes of American consumerism. Mr. Burns celebrates the human need to connect again and again through shared stories. And the showtimes are from nine, from um, 7.30 p.m. with matinees on Sundays at 2 p.m. And they're going to be running from October 9th through the 13th. And again, the 16th through the 20th. So you guys can't miss it. It's kicking off this weekend as well. But also... There's an art clip I have for you guys. It is an art clip that will be running from the Clay Studio until October 25th. Um, so just be a little beyond the uh, Mr. Burns play. So without further ado, here is At the Clay Studio. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Let's wrap things up with some more 
events that are happening within the city of Missoula for your Saturday and even Sunday. Um, markets, hey, the markets are still going on. They're still slated for the weekend until probably end of October. Markets, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. You got Clark, Clark Fork River Market. You got the uh, Pine Street, uh, Pine Street um, People's Market. And then you got the Red X's OG Farmer's Market in the downtown Missoula area. You can't miss it. But there's also uh, Garden City Church is hosting a Youth Life Pancake Breakfast fundraiser. This is to help youth, young life keep loving, on, uh, cl loving up on the students of Missoula. Missoula Race for the Cure, Kara Spark, join us as we celebrate breast cancer survivors and honor those we have lost. 75% of all funds raised stays locally to help those in need of breast cancer screenings, diagnostic services, and uh, patient financial assistance. The remaining 25% goes directly to the fund breast cancer research. Family fun time at the YMCA kicking off at 9 a.m. as well, but of course this happens uh, from September through May, and they have a family friendly fun time at the YMCA. This is an indoor play place for families, uh, indoor all weather play place where parents are welcome to join in the fun. Bound houses, tumble mats, and more. It's $17 per, uh, seventeen dollars per family without memberships as well. But if you're a membership, you get in free for the YMCA. And this is Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 to uh, nine to about 11.30 a.m. Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. But of course, Fridays is in the afternoon from 3.30 to 5 p.m. They got f fall theater cl uh, skill classes starting at the MCT, starting at 10 a.m. Uh, MCT can take your child acting skills to the next level. They're at, they have a K through uh, two, they have a th three, uh, third grade through sixth grade, and they have a seventh through 12th grade uh, experience to get people uh, excited about future rehearsals, I involved with MCT, and to grow them as a potential future actors. Um, the tuition is $100 per student per class, it happens starting at 10 a.m. at Missoula's Children's Theater. Kickstart your writing, Saturday writing workshop at the Living Art of Montana. They have a bunch of things happening this weekend as well, but this is one thing that I'm going to be talking about. Kickstart your writing, Saturday workshop with Caroline Patterson. The standalone work writing workshop are offers monthly beginning in August and running through December. This one is happening October 12th. And the next one's happening November 9th. And then the last one that's this year is going to happen December 14th. And a lot of times what the Living Art of Montana does is they help people who uh, are dealing with a terminal illness and with loss and cancer survivors and help people kind of use art as a way to heal uh, spiritually. Um, Saturday drop-ins. MCAT, every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m., your kid who's aged about 9 to about 13, 14 years, old, years of age, it's $10 per kid. But if you have siblings, it's $15 for siblings. If you have two siblings, $15. If you have three, three siblings, it's $15. Boom, you can get such a great deal and all that stuff. So, yeah, I'm selling to you because we're MCAT, and it's a great place as well. But you better hurry up here because it's, it's basically we filled out the, for the last three weeks um, here at the MCAT Saturday drop-ins as well, so be careful. Uh, so we start at 1 p.m. and we go into about 5 p.m. Um, it's basically a, a wonderful place for people to create and share, stop animation, live action filming, and mostly to work on editing projects as well. It is a wonderful resource here that we provide for the community, but we just need a little headway before we go into the library in which we'll be pr uh, providing this event for free uh, coming up next uh Probably next uh, season, but this is the last season your kid will have to pay. All right, collective pop-up sale. Top Hat Lounge is doing a host of collective pop-up sale, so come trade some thrifty clothing. Um, collectible sales uh, is from 2 to 4 p.m. on Saturday, but if you pay a little bit of extra money, you get to come in a little bit early and enjoy more a leisurely stroll through the racks. Both before the madness, VIPs will get a coupon book containing over $100 in discounts from participating shops, and all proceeds go to the See Them Home campaign. Finally, Sunday, you got Peace Party at 2009, the 2019 Peace Party at Missoula Fairgrounds starting at 3.30 each year. They come together at a peace community at the Fall Fe Peace Festival. It's their chance to celebrate the past year and look ahead as they raise money for each year for our, their programs. Your generosity each year inspires us to keep going, keep, uh, keeps us working for peace. And they'll have a catered organic meal entertained by Tom Catmull, the signature auction, and more. And of course, Ed Norton Big Band will be playing uh, tomorrow, uh, Sunday night at 7 p.m. New time, new music starts at uh, Downtown Nats Collective, 7 p.m. and goes to about 9 p.m. Perfect end to a Sunday, um, th possibly three-day weekend for some people as well because next Monday is uh, Columbus Day nationally, but Indigenous Peoples Day 
in Missoula. Uh, Seven dollars per student is ten dollars general admission, and if you want to reserve a seat or a table, uh, it's twelve dollars. Uh, but you have to do it in advance, and it's through the Downtown Dance Collective. Mark your calendars for those monthly events. Every second Sunday of the month, you can uh, join a friend and do some dancing to some um, old-school big band jazz. All ages welcome and no experience necessary. Come early, limited seating available. Doors open at 6.30, p 6 .30 p.m., and the music starts at 7 p.m. All right, and this is off of their uh, 121 Main um, Street Avenue. It's across from the parking garage off Main Street, so you can't miss it. All right, so if you are interested in finding out more about Missoula events. You can go to their events webpage, missoulaevents.net. Hey, what's going on, Missoula? Missoulaevents.net. Check it out. Forget about it. And you can find out more about MCAT by going on to MCAT.org, Missoula's community media resource, Missoula's community access television. It is a wonderful resource for anybody. We are doing an editing 101 class for anybody. I'm just checking my time. That's why I looked over there. Um, it is an editing one-on-one -on -one class. If you are involved, if you are interested in getting um, involved with MCAT and you have no experience with editing, I'm hosting a editing class so you can teach you guys all about the editing tricks and tips and all that stuff. So here's a, just a brief little sample as well. So if we take a look on the screen, on the screen, there you go. Thank you. Uh, I use Final Cut Pro to show you guys the video. So right here, you can guys can see the Final Cut Pro clicked on here. You know, some of these things are already finished, but for this one, I edited down the forestry deal. So what I basically did is I stacked all these guys on top of each other so you can have a nice representation of all these videos as well. So if I click on this guy, I hit V, I can mute it. You can't see it. V, take it down. And so every time I put a layer on here, the audio is right there. But if I wanted to get rid of an, an audio layer, I can detach audio and I can delete it myself. And then it becomes less and less. But of course, I can always mute it by grabbing this little line where the audio is. And if you see closely, you can see how there's an audio line. Of course, it's not close enough, as you can see on the screen. But there's this little editing um, trick trick of the trade. But of course, you know, if with, it, with any editing, you guys can click on a particular clip right here. You go up to the top right-hand corner right about now, and I can up the exposure. I can make it a little sharper if I wanted to uh, lower this down about. This is the master lighting, and I, I want to increase, maybe like darken some of the shadows, make it a little more cinematic kind of looking. So you can tell this is what it looks like when it's edited. It's a little, it's a little harsher, a little sharper with the shadows. But you can definitely tell the difference. And it gives it kind of more of that kind of a poppy feel, um, especially when you uh, play with a little bit of the shadow work as well. That, But of course, the shadows they already have to be there if you want to superimpose the shadow. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> it's a whole other process. All right. So without further ado, I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. Um, you can uh, find out more information by uh, logging on to our MCAT webpage, MCAT.org. Uh, but without further ado, I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. It is a good weekend. It's going to be cold. Stay warm. Uh, be good um, and take care. And I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and goodbye. Mm -hmm.